Uh, or let's all take our Bibles now and let's go to Psalm 145 this morning. Psalm 145 in your Bibles. Psalm 145. Let's say this together, shall we? You'll enjoy this psalm. Wonderful, wonderful words of life. Just like the song says. I will extol thee, my God, O King, and I will bless thy name forever and ever. Every day will I bless thee, and I will praise thy name forever and ever. Great is the Lord, and greatly to be praised, and His greatness is unsearchable. One generation shall praise thy works to another, and shall declare thy mighty acts. I will speak of the glorious honor of thy majesty, and of thy wondrous works. And men shall speak of the might of thy terrible acts, and I will declare thy greatness. They shall abundantly utter the memory of thy great goodness, and shall sing of thy righteousness. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger and of great mercy. The Lord is good to all, and his tender mercies over all his works. All thy works shall praise thee, O Lord, and thy saints shall bless thee. They shall speak of the glory of thy kingdom, and talk of thy power, to make known to the sons of men his mighty acts, and the glorious majesty of his kingdom. Thy kingdom is an everlasting kingdom, and thy dominion endureth throughout all generations. The Lord upholdeth all that fall, and raiseth up all those that be bowed down. The eyes of all wait upon thee, and thou givest them their meat in due season. Thou openest thine hand, and satisfiest the desire of every living thing. The Lord is righteous in all his ways, and holy in all his works. The Lord is nigh to all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. He will fulfill the desire of them that fear him. He also will hear their cry and save them. The Lord preserveth all them that love him, but all the wicked will he destroy. My mouth shall speak the praise of the Lord, let all flesh bless His holy name forever and ever. What wonderful words. Do you do that in verse number 2? Every day will I bless Thee. Take some time each day, amen, to praise the Lord and bless Him for His goodness to us. He is such a good God. So many things we take for granted. Me and Brother Joe and Brother Matthew were just speaking about before the service today. And just thanking God for giving us uh, strength to our bodies, to our joints. You know, uh, sometimes we, as we get older, we, you know, we notice we ache a bit here and there. And we have some, maybe some injuries. And boy, I tell you, we've got so much to be thankful for to have health in our bodies. And uh, to serve the Lord, to live for God, to praise Him, to, be able to talk to Him, to people. You know, about His great acts, His great goodness. It talks about that here. To make known His mighty acts that He's done. And God has been so good to me. God's been so good to you. And so today, let's continue on with our study concerning the biblical home. This will be part three in this series. And I noticed on verse number four how it talks about one generation shall praise thy works to another and shall declare thy mighty acts. And certainly we want to see that in our families. We want to see our children go on each and every generation to continue to praise the Lord and to praise His works and to declare His mighty acts that He's done. God's done a great work in our lives. It meant to save us. And some of you are first-generation Christians. Some of us are second-generation Christians. Maybe there's some third-generation as well. Um, but uh, God has done a great thing in our lives. Amen. And God wants us to continue. And if we do things right, if we do things God's way, if we have a biblical home, I believe it will continue. Now, it is sad sometimes you see that some even saved people have, have kids that they're raised and they go to the world. And they don't stay in church or they don't they don't live for God. That's sad. That does happen sometimes, you know. Very sad to see. But by the grace of God, uh, we want to see our children raised uh, in the church and, and continue uh, to live for God and, and stay in church. Amen. I, I believe that's the desire of every uh, child of God, every uh, mother or father that raised their children to uh, get saved and, and to follow the Lord. And uh, certainly we want to see that. And I, I think of those in my own life. I know of my relatives and, and uh, friends I've had that were in church at one time and now today uh, not serving the Lord. And that, that's sad to see. But um, by the grace of God, I don't believe it has to be the way for you and your family. Amen? And so I just pray that uh, we will 
uh, do things God's way. That's really what we're looking at today. Uh, how to do things God's way. Uh, and we're looking at marriage today, all right? Between a man and a woman uh, coming together in holy matrimony. Uh, marriage uh, is just a, a wonderful institution. I can't say enough good about it. Uh, I remember people kidding with me and Eva before we got married. They knew we were engaged and said, oh, wait till you get married. Uh, you know, things all the lovey-dovey right now. But wait till you get married. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, you know like that, right? Well, then we got married, and I'm like, well, it's still good, it's still great, you know. Oh, well, well, then they said, oh, wait till you get married for a while. Wait, wait, after a while, you know, that honeymoon stay, it'll go away, and you know, all that stuff. But it's still good, you know. It, at, at times, you know, there's, uh, you know, the struggles we all go through with uh, relationships and that, but uh, it's, it's wonderful. Uh, marriage is a wonderful thing, it's a wonderful institution. You know, I, I love it. I really, it agrees with me. You know, it does, and uh, I thank God for my wife and and God bringing us together. And uh, you know, I got into that a couple weeks back. How God brought us together. How God chose my wife for me. That's very important. Letting God lead your life. We looked at that on Wednesday night. You know, letting God be the center of our life. We're revolving around Him, not Him around us. He's not our genie. Okay, God's not our genie. Come on, God, I need you. Hey, God. Hey, God, I need you. No. We don't treat God that way, okay? He's God. He's the Lord. We answer to Him, okay? He doesn't answer to us, you know? So, if we do things God's way, we can have His blessings in our life. And that's, that's what I believe our church wants to do. I believe God has bring together people here in our church that, that want to do things God's way and have His full blessing. Not just some of His blessings. God blesses everybody, right? God's good to all men. But we want God's full blessing in our life. And sometimes we've we've messed up along the way. But like I preached last week, God always has a plan B and a plan C and a plan D. If you just get right with Him, if you repent and uh, say, God, I messed up. Lord, help me. You know, and forgive me, Father. If you have a true heart of repentance and godly sorrow, get back up again. God will help you back up. Amen. He'll set you back on your way and He'll, he'll strengthen you. He'll bless you. help you. Amen. And God can turn things around. It's amazing how God can do that. Out of the adulterous situation with David and Bathsheba, Solomon was born. Right? And took over the kingdom after his father David. And it's amazing what God can do when we repent. And, and David was very quick to repent. You know, he would get right with God. You know, he would do things wrong from time to time, but he always came back to the Lord. May we uh, do the same. Marriage, a wonderful institution designed by God. Let's look at it today, okay? Shall we for a few minutes? Uh, Genesis, let's go back to the very beginning, and we'll start there. Genesis chapter number 2, verse number 7. Genesis chapter 2, verse 7. The Bible says, And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground, and breathed to his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. We men should never think too highly of ourselves. We're made out of mud. Okay. That's where you came from. You're just, you're just a piece of... You're an animated dirt ball. That's what you are. <laughs> That's right. Um, now, if we go a little further, verse 18, it says, And the Lord God said, It is not good that man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. And out of the ground, the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, and that was the name. Wouldn't that have been fun? Hey? Eh? Let's see. Hippopotamus, yeah. Okay. Oh, giraffe. You know, wouldn't that have been awesome? That would have been, been great. But that was Adam's job. He did a great job, amen? Verse 21. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. You ladies didn't come from mud. How about that? Eh? Maybe that's why they're a little prettier than us. Because they didn't come from mud. We did. And Adam said in verse 23, This now is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She should be called woman because she was taken out of man. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. 
Uh, Hebrews chapter 13, uh, verse number 4. The Bible says, Marriage is honorable in all. It's an honorable institution. Bed undefiled, but for mongers and adulterers, God will judge. It's a sacred thing. It's a wonderful thing. Um, but the world has polluted it. The devil, the world, has polluted this holy institution. It's interesting one day in heaven that uh, there will be no marriage uh, this like we have that we experience here on earth. Uh, God says we'll, we'll be like the angels up there, right? It won't be the same. And so enjoy it now while you can. Yeah. Amen? <laughs> It'll be different there, right? And uh, I'm sure we'll still be friends, close friends, and all that. Me and my wife do plan when we get up there, we're still going to go for walks together and, uh, you know, walk around New Jerusalem or whatever, you know, spend some time together. But it'll be different, you know? And, you know, it's strange. You know, some of these cults, you know, uh, uh, Mormons in particular, they believe you can become a god. They believe that you can uh, have your own planet, have multiple wives, and talk about your own planet. The Muslims, they believe similarly. Uh, you know, they're, they're into all the physical part of, of, of marriage, and I think they can do that for eternity. But that's not God's plan, okay, for us, right? Uh, it's going to be all about Him and serving Him and living for Him. And, um, it's, it's just, you, you can tell, just they're way, way out there, right? Uh, they didn't get that from the Bible, that's for sure. But there will be the marriage supper of the Lamb, and uh, we, the people of God, are called the Bride of Christ. Isn't that a wonderful thing? You know, and uh, he shall cherish us forever, and we shall cherish him forever. It's going to be wonderful, absolutely wonderful. But again, the the world has has polluted the holy institution of marriage here on this earth, and it's, it's very sad. Go to Matthew chapter twenty-four. Let's look at a few verses about that. Matthew chapter twenty-four. Matthew 24, let's look at verse 37. Matthew 24, verse 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. And we believe that we're at least close to those days, um, like the days of Noah. Uh, verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, Unto the day that Noah entered into the ark. There's nothing wrong with marriage. There's nothing wrong with getting married. But uh, this phrase here, marrying and giving in marriage, has to do with uh, having, or suggests having multiple relationships. Uh, divorcing, remarrying, divorcing again, remarrying, you know, and having multiple relationships. We see that a lot nowadays, do we not? Well, that's how it was in the days of Noah. They polluted marriage, right? And uh, had multiple relationships. And we, we see today, it's just, uh, it's insane. It's insane. Now, years ago, you know, back in my grandfather's time, my great-grandfather's great time, uh, Miss Hannah, uh, you, you know, there wasn't so much divorce. Right. You know, it, it, was, uh, it was considered an honorable thing if you stuck with the same person all your life. It was, it was almost expected back in those days. Right. And if mm -hmm. anyone, you know, divorced, well, that was awful. Yeah. Right. Well, now you hear it, it's like, no big deal. It happens, every, it happens all, all the time, mm -hmm. you know? It should still be a big deal, though, yeah. because it's not of God, right? And uh, it, it's really sad to see what's what's happened to the world around us and the change of the times. But we don't have to change, amen. We do not have to change. God's word doesn't change, and God doesn't change. We can still stand firm on what's right. Uh, let's look at some things here. What the Lord had to say about the sanctity of marriage. Look in uh, Gospel of Mark, if you would. Chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. Let's uh, start reading there at verse number 1. It says, And he arose from thence, and cometh into the coast of Judea, by the farther side of Jordan, and the people resort unto him again, and uh, as he was one. And he taught them again. And the Pharisees came to him and asked him, Is it lawful for a man to put away his wife? Tempting him. They were always trying to trip him up or, you know, all the time. Verse 3, And he answered and said unto them, What did Moses command you? A lot of times God would answer by a question. 
try it out with someone. Yeah. If you think someone's being a little skeptical, or they're um, being a critic, or you know, just want to argue, give them a question. You know, for the answer. The Lord Jesus did that all the time. You know, throw it back at them, make them think. You know, yeah. about some truth that God brings to your heart. And they said in verse 4, Moses suffered to write a bill of divorcement and to put her away. This is true. We do find that in Deuteronomy. And uh, Jesus answered and said unto them, For the hardness of your heart he wrote you this precept. There's a reason why Moses did it that way. Uh, but from the beginning of the creation, God made them male and female. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and cleave to his wife. We just read that in Genesis. And they twain shall be one flesh. So then they are no more twain, but one flesh. What therefore God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. It's meant to stay together. And in the house, his disciples asked him again the same matter. And he saith unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife and marry another, committeth adultery against her. And if a woman shall put away her husband and be married to another, she committeth adultery. That's a serious thing. This divorce thing, remarrying, it's, it's out of control. and uh, It's not of God. Okay, This uh, looseness of marriages and relationships that we see today, it's, it's certainly not God's will. Okay? Saving for the cause of fornication, there may be some extreme cases, you know, where fornication is involved, um, that there can be a, a divorcement, but um, those are extreme cases. All right, Most of the time you find most people, they get divorced for... You know, it's just, well, I don't love him anymore. Or I just, uh, we can't get along, you know. We can't work it out, you know. And they get a divorce, you know. God says, no, 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 you don't do that. You stick together, you stay together, you work it out. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's God's way. And God will bless when we do that. First Corinthians, look there with me, if you would. First Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Verse number 9. It says, Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Uh, be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adulterers, uh, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revilers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of God. And such were some of you, but ye are washed. Amen. Praise the Lord. But ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of our God. All things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Meats for the belly, and the belly for meats, but God shall destroy both it and them. Now the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God hath both raised up the Lord, and will also raise us up by His own power. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to an harlot is one body? For two, saith he, shall be one flesh. But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sinneth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is a temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with a price, therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. When man and woman come together, it's a serious deal. It's a very serious deal in the eyes of God. God sees you as coming together in one flesh, not just physically, but your three parts, right? Your body, soul, and spirit. You come together in those as well. And uh, it's important, the relationship we looked at a couple weeks ago, to connect on that uh, spiritual and soul level before you come together physically. Okay? This is God's way. This is God's way of doing it. This is the way we want our children to do it. We want them to do it right. If we didn't do it that way, we want, we want them to experience God's way, God's best. And so you connect on the spiritual level, the soul level, and then um, you come together on the physical level. Uh, we're not to play around with relationships. The world is all about that, you know. 
uh, we got into dating a couple weeks back. Uh, we should not be close to a person of the opposite sex unless we are going to be married to them or uh, if we are married to them at the time. Uh, by close, I, I mean spending a lot of time together, uh, sharing, lodging together. We see that today. People just kind of shack up, you know, uh, sharing finance together, this sort of thing. Uh, this is improper unless you're married. God wants you to be married, right? Wants you to come together and make a covenant between each other, with each other, that you will uh, stay together. Now, if you look down into uh, chapter number 7 now, 1 Corinthians chapter 7, notice what the Apostle Paul says here in verse number 1. Now concern the things wherever you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every man have, his, have her own husband. So until she's yours, mm -hmm. until he's yours, hands off. Amen? That's God's way. And uh, that's, that's a good um, rule to live by. To keep you out of a lot of trouble. Mm -hmm. And uh, then you can do it God's way. You can connect on that soul and spiritual right. level. And then you come together uh, before the Lord, and then you make uh, a vow, and uh, you come together to uh, make that covenant for God, and then um, you come together physically. Uh, that is God's way. The world's way is opposite. You go with the body first. You try each other out first, right, to see if it'll work out. You know, um, that that is not God's way, not at all. So, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, let every woman have her own husband. So, it, it's important. Amen? And uh, the world is doing it the wrong way. Look in verse 3. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. Likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, Except it be um, with consent for a time that you may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your tendency. And uh, But I speak this by permission and not a commandment. Uh, for I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, every man after this manner and another after that. I said, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. Uh, Paul was not married. And so he was able to spend his whole life you know, for God and had uh, maybe some more liberty, you might say, in that respect. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. He wasn't saying marriage is bad. Uh, but if it's God's will, if God uh, enables you and you can remain unmarried, maybe you could uh, do more for God in, in one way. Verse 10, And unto the married I command, yet not I, but the Lord, let not the wife depart from her husband. But if she depart, let her remain unmarried. And this is another thing we don't see today, even among churches and God's people, that if they do depart, they, they get married again. Okay? The Bible says, let her remain unmarried or be reconciled to her husband. Uh, you would want to be reconciled to your original husband if you could, if that's possible. Sometimes, you know, they, they move on, they, they marry somebody else, and it's, that's not possible. But if at all possible, God says uh, here through the Apostle Paul, it would be good to be reconciled again. I've, I've known of cases where that's happened in uh, situations, right? Relationships where uh, the uh, husband uh, left the wife for another woman and then uh, saw that what he did was wrong, and he repented, and he came back to his original wife because she didn't marry. She didn't move on, and, and she received him and, uh, and forgave him. I've known of, of that happening. And that's, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, look now at verse uh, 39. Let's move uh, a little bit uh, further in the chapter here. I won't look at everything here, but uh, just a few things to point out. Verse 39 says, The wife is bound by the law as long as her husband liveth. But if her husband be dead, she is at liberty to be married to whom she will, only in the Lord. So, as long as he's alive. Amen. You ladies, just stick with it. Uh, I'm stuck with Ms. Eva. She's stuck with me. That's a good thing. Amen. We're stuck together. No way out of it. Verse 40, But she is happier if she so abide after my judgment, and I think also I have the Spirit of God. If you can remain a virgin, if you can remain single and serve God, uh, what a blessing that would be, if that be God's will for you. 
Now, let's just look at just a few things uh, today concerning how to have a good marriage. I hope these can be helpful to you. I hope that God can be a blessing. Now, I'm not an expert on marriage by no means. Mm -hmm. And some of you here today, you've been married longer than me. And you could probably teach me a few things. Amen. I'm sure you could. But um, just a few things here the Lord has shown me. And uh, I pray that maybe they can be a blessing to you. Especially some of you that are uh, in younger marriages or haven't been married that long. Uh, go with me now to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5 has a little bit to speak about marriage and the home. Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at the verse number 21. Let's start there. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21 says, Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God, now, if you're a male chauvinist, you're in the wrong church. That's right. We're not male chauvinists around here. Okay? We have honor and respect for ladies. We honor them very highly. I would not be in the ministry if it was not for my wife. I could not be in the ministry if it was not A pastor has to be married. It has to be the husband and wife. That's, that's one of our parties. Right? So I couldn't be here preaching to you today. I couldn't be a pastor of a church if it wasn't for my wife. So that's a big deal. I need my wife. Right? She's important. And we believe in submitting ourselves one to another. That's a good thing. Very good thing. Number one, be willing to compromise. Now, when you mention that word in Baptist churches about compromise, right. ooh, what do you mean compromise? Right? Well, not compromise to the flesh or the world, the devil. Right. Okay, but I mean compromise to your spouse. Your wife isn't the devil. Your husband, he's not the devil. Okay. So it's okay to compromise a little bit here and there. And um, it's, it's, it's something that will help a marriage. Okay, Not doctrine. Don't compromise that. Mm -hmm. don't, don't compromise what's right. Never do that. Okay. Notice it says you're in the fear of, of God. All right. So we respect uh, the laws of God, the Word of God, the will of God in our life. Uh, never compromise that. But I'm just saying, we do need to submit to each other, as the Bible says here. Okay, well, Romans chapter 12. Hold your place there in Ephesians. We'll come back to Ephesians, but let's go over to Romans just for a moment. And Romans chapter number 12. There are some things that my wife would like to see done a certain way. Maybe I'd like to see him another way, but we just we kind of meet in the middle on it or come to some sort of agreement, you know? You know what I mean? Like, uh, our position in the home is not to just boss our wife around. I know we're the head of the home, but that God never meant for us just to, you know, be a male chauvinist. That was never God's will. I know some people think that way, but that, that's messed up. Okay, That's messed up thinking. The man is there simply to make the final calls. He, he's the leader, and he makes the final decision on things. You know what I mean? He stays in charge. But he's not to just, you know, boss around and just, you know, have his way in everything. Come on, you know, you, know, you, you got to submit to each other. you got to work things out. Yeah. Right? A little bit of give and take. That's a good thing in a marriage. That's a very good thing. And it's God's way. Romans chapter 12. And... Uh, Verse number 10. It says, Be kindly affection one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Okay. Uh, look at verse 18. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. That's including your spouse. <laughs> we want to live peaceably with each other. Right? We want to have a peaceful home. As much as lieth in you. Let's, uh, let's live together in peace and harmony work things out. Sometimes we uh, we men, we need to shape up. We need, to, we need to change our ways. You know, Maybe the wife has a good point. Right? You need to pick up your laundry off the floor. Right? Put it where it needs to go. You know, Don't be a pig around the house. You know, and she makes a few good points. We can do that. Be willing uh, to work things out and work together uh, on things. Amen. That's, that's a good, good uh, way to uh, make a marriage work together. 
Uh, please, dear Lord, keep harmony in the home. All right. First Peter, chapter number three. First Peter, chapter three. Never compromise doctrine. Never compromise what's right. Don't you know, stay firm on that. I'm not saying that. Pastor Todd said today we can compromise. No one. <laughs> Don't you go out and say that. But we're talking about submitting ourselves one to another. This is honor to God. We men don't always have to have our way. That's right. Amen. Sometimes our wives are pretty smart about things. And they come up with very intelligent things. And we need to listen to them. You know? I listen to my wife all the time. Now sometimes when she's talking, I'm maybe not paying attention like I should, but I am I'm listening. <laughs> It sort of sounds like Charlie Brown's teacher, but um, I'm listening. First Peter chapter three, verse number seven. Now this is kind of directed towards the men. But I think you'll see where I'm getting at. Uh, Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as and as being heirs together of the grace of life. Notice this last phrase, that your prayers be not hindered. So if we're not um, treating our wife the way we should, if we're not working together, we're not submitting ourselves one to another, we could have our, our prayers hindered us men. You know? Uh, think about that. God is not pleased, right? And we're not submitting ourselves one to another. Being willing to compromise and, and work things out and work together, it's a good thing. It's a very good thing for marriage. Be willing to do that. All right. Now back to Ephesians chapter five. Something else. Just a couple more things I have for you here. Ephesians chapter five. Now let's look at verse number twenty-two. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. And we already talked about you know the husband being the head of the home. He makes the final call and all that. One head, right? Not two heads. Um, not three or four, but the kids get involved and make decisions in the home. No, the, the father, he makes he makes the call. Why have submit yourselves on your own husbands? It's orderly that way. That's right. It's a very orderly thing to have one head. Mm -hmm. right? And this last phrase is what I want to uh, focus on. As unto the Lord. A very important phrase. As unto the Lord. Number two, not only be willing to compromise in your marriage, submitting yourselves one to another, but number two, beware of expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Beware of expectations. It's been said, expectations ruins relationships. It could ruin your relationship in a church. You come into a church and you expect certain things, right? If you don't see certain things, or the pastor doesn't handle things a certain way, the way you expect, yeah. okay. uh, you get offended. Mm -hmm. we, we've had people that happen. They, they come into our church and we don't do things a certain way and they get offended. Right? Because of their expectations. Mm -hmm. right? That can happen in a marriage. You need to treat your spouse like Christ. How would you treat Jesus if he came over to your house today? How would you treat him? You'd wave him hand and foot. He wouldn't have to raise a finger. You'd want to do everything for him. Right? Massage his feet. Whatever he wanted. You'd be there. You'd do it. Right? Cooking the best meal. Is the temperature just right, Lord? Would you like a blanket? You know? Right? Sometimes I think we expect too much out of each other. You know? yeah. Bye. He's not pulling his way. Yeah. She's not pulling her way. It's true. You know? mm -hmm. That's where we're going to get into trouble in marriage. Trouble can happen because of the expectations. Right? Hey, you, you pick up the slack, right? Yeah. The, the husband it does have a thing about, let's just say, you know, throwing his laundry on the floor, you know? And maybe you tenderly, kindly mention to him occasionally, I mean, it would be nice if you put in the laundry basket or, you know, but you're kind about it, you're sweet about it, right? 
but it keeps happening. Well, you pick it up. You don't just leave it there and try to, right. you know, yeah. and then give them a hard time. Yeah. Just pick it up. That's right. Pick up the slack in the marriage and treat them like Christ. Right. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 23, Colossians 3, 23, says, And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord. That goes for our marriage as well. And not unto men. Everything we do in the home, unto the Lord. It's for the Lord. You're picking up that laundry for the Lord. Yes. Right? Yes. When you're on your job, when you're working, you do it as unto the Lord. Yes. Not just to please your boss. You're working for Jesus. Yes. You know? And that's how you live in the home, in the marriage. Yes. When you think of it that way, when your thinking is right, when you're thinking godly, and doing it God's way, man, it doesn't matter what your spouse yes. does. Right. They can make a mess. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't care. You'll clean it up because you were cleaning up for Jesus. Yeah. If Jesus made a mess, yeah. you, oh, it's okay, Lord. No problem. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> right. You spilled yeah. the tea. It's okay. It's all right. I got it. I got it. It's okay. Right. No problem. No problem. It's true. But why is it being so hard on our spouses? And what are you doing? You pig. 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 We vomit. We you know, verbal vomit. What's wrong with us? True. Are we doing it as unto the Lord? Wow. Our marriages should be that way. Beware of expectations. Yeah. They can ruin relationships. Yeah. Don't expect so much. All right? Oh, he doesn't meet my standard. She doesn't meet my standard. You know? <laughs> Matthew uh, chapter 25. Look there with me. Matthew chapter 25. There are some things to this day that bug me about my wife. I've asked her to change Brother Curtis. And she works at it. She does the best she can. Sometimes she remembers. Sometimes she doesn't. And it bugs me. It bugs me. Inside I go, oh, she did it again. She did it again. I won't get into all the details. You know? But I've learned to just deal with it. Just deal with it. Right? Amen? Matthew 25, verse 40. You know the passage here. The Lord was saying, you know, I've, I was hungry, you gave me meat. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, you took me in, right? Verse number 40. And the king shall answer and say to them, Verily I say unto you, and as much as you have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren, you have done it unto me. That's how we're to treat each other. Like Christ. When you think of it that way, that'll help you not to be so concerned with these expectations. They can ruin relationships, all right? And that goes for not only marriage, and other, other relationships in our life as well. One last thing let me give you here. Um, again, out of Ephesians, uh, chapter 5. If you still got your place there, or you want to go back there. Ephesians chapter 5. Not only be willing to compromise, submitting yourselves one to another, beware of expectations, do it as unto the Lord. But number three, let's look at Ephesians chapter 5 and verse, uh, well, let's read verse uh, 23, 24, and 25. For the husband, verse 23, is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be unto their own husbands in everything. Then verse 25, Husbands, love your wives. Even as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for it. Number three, put on charity. And that's something the Apostle Paul said in Colossians. Put on charity. Um, love your wives. In Titus chapter 2, verse 4, it says to wives, love your husbands. We need to remind ourselves daily how much Christ loves us how much He puts up with us, how much He's forgiven us, right? Look over in Ephesians chapter 4, and verse 32, right across the page, or back a page or so. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, and be kind-hearted, or kind one to another, and tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. How much has God forgiven you? How much has Christ forgiven you? A lot. 
lot. Amen? Amen. So much. And when you have this attitude in marriage, you just keep forgiving. Mm -hmm. right. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiving. Yes. Keep forgiving. Keep forgiving. Right? Just like Christ does with us. He puts up with a lot with us. That's right. He puts up a lot with me. Oh, does He ever. And Christ would never throw us away, would He? He'd never throw us away. He'd never get rid of us. How in this world today that I don't want you anymore. I'm going to get rid of you. We're going to get a divorce. We're going to separate. And we can throw our spouse away. Christ would never do that. He'll never let us go. That's the kind of love that we should have. We should be getting closer to God as we grow in the Lord. And we should have more of that Christ-like love in our hearts. Right? And so that we put on charity. We put on Christ's love. And we put up with a lot. We're willing to put up with whatever. Amen? And we just keep forgiving. Having that forgiving heart. This is important in a marriage. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 8. Look with me there. 1 Peter chapter 4, verse number 8. First Peter 4, verse 8. It says, And above all things have fervent charity among yourselves. For charity shall cover the multitude of sins. That Christ-like love. That's true charity. Love like Christ. Suffers long. Puts up with a lot. Just keeps forgiving. Amen? That's what the Lord does. Matthew chapter 18. Look over with me there. Gospel of Matthew chapter 18. Doesn't hold grudges. Is not keeping any kind of a score. Hmm? Yeah. Right? Right. Yeah. Matthew chapter 18. It's not 50 50. That's the world's philosophy. 50-50. You do your part. I'll do my part. You know? No, it's 100%. 100%. You do 100% regardless of what their percentage is. You're not keeping track of their percentage. You give 100% all the time. That's Christ-like. That's a Christ-like love. Make for a good marriage. If we do it God's way. But we need the Lord to help us, won't we? We've got to stay close to Jesus. We've got to stay close to God. Keep getting closer to God. But He can help us, amen, to have this kind of a heart, this kind of an attitude. Matthew chapter 18. I'm not saying we can do this in our own, own self, our men, in our own flesh. Matthew 18, Peter comes to the Lord in verse 21. And he says, Lord, how oft shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him until seven times? Seven times. That, that sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. What the Lord say? I say not unto thee until seven times, but until seventy times seven. Four hundred and ninety times. How about that? <laughs> by the time you get that high, you, you've left off counting by that time. Amen? So you get the Lord's point. You just keep forgiving. Yeah. Just keep forgiving. Amen. That's God's way. Maybe some of you have seen this illustration before, but... Um, So put God here at the top. Our goal is to get closer to God. And we have the man. I'm getting a Baptist haircut there. <laughs> the lady. Nice long hair. And our goal is to get closer to God, right? Both of us. That's what we're doing. So we're heading up this, this scale spiritually mm -hmm. towards God. And so down here, we, we start here, maybe we first get saved or you know, we're still young in the Lord. Mm -hmm. But as we mature and we get closer to God, 
We get closer to each other, don't we? This is what God is doing in us. If we'll allow God to continue to work in our heart and, um, and we'll uh, put our heart into living for God, walking with Him, um, getting into His Word, we, we need our spiritual food. Amen? We, we need it every day. We, we need to eat, don't we? If we don't eat, we'll get weak. We can't go without it. Ooh, we need it. We need some for God every day. Right? We spend time praising God and praying and you know, just taking breaks. I know I know we work and we have jobs, but you have breaks, right? Occasionally. You get a coffee or grab a donut or something, right? Um, you take a break. Well, pray during that break or praise God during that break. You know, include the Lord, right? And and allow yourself and allow God and the Spirit, His Spirit within you to draw you closer to Him. And as that happens individually, and we have our own personal responsibility, don't we? Your, your wife can't make you be spiritual. Yeah. You can't make your wife be spiritual. But you can do your part. Yeah. And you can pray for you. You can be right with God. That's right. So you might be a little, you might be up here and they might be still be down there. Or she might be up here and you might be down here. Mm -hmm. right. But you just keep going. Right. And, and when you go up the scale on your side, whoever one you are, you're going to encourage that other one to come up. Because yeah. Yeah. they're going to see what God's doing in your life. Right. And that's going to excite them. And that's going to be, wow, that, this is amazing. Because you're going to be showing more of Christ's love. You're going to be so forgiving. You know, uh, you're not going to have these expectations. And uh, you're going to bring a peace into the home. And it's, it's going to be True. wonderful. And they're like, man, I, I need to get my Bible like you've been getting in your Bible. I need to get some from God like you've been getting some from God. I need to start praising God and praying more like you've been doing, you know? And you, you work together, and it's almost like whichever one is going up the scale, it just kind of help pull the other one up, you know? <laughs> it's, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing. As you get closer to God, you get closer to each other. This is what God would have to happen, what we'd like to see happen in our lives, Amen. So that we might have biblical homes and good marriage. There's so much more I could say about marriage today. I'm not sure some of you could give me good advice as well. But just a few things here I believe that would be helpful to us. Amen. Be willing to compromise, beware of expectations, and put on charity. Allow Christ's love, amen, to flood your heart. And just keep forgiving to each other. May God help us, amen, have good homes, good marriages. It makes for a strong church that glorifies God. Amen. Your home should be a sanctuary from the world. It should be a peaceful place. Peace, peace, wonderful peace. That's where a home should be. But so many, you know, so many children, their home is so chaotic, you know, screaming and yelling at each other, cussing each other out and fussing and fighting and, you know, Husband and wife, yeah, you know, should be the not in the Christian. We God's people that experience the love of Christ, we should have the best homes. We should. We have no reason not to. They should be sweet, wonderful, peaceful, kind, and gracious. I know sometimes we slip up. I know sometimes we get in the flesh and we get on the wrong side of the bed. You know. Maybe we didn't pray like we should have. We didn't, you know, get along with God that day. But let's work at it, amen. Yeah. Let's keep working at it. Learn from our mistakes. Learn from our errors, and say, no, I, I need to change that. This is going to change. I'm not going to keep doing what I've been doing. Something's wrong. God, I need to get right. Because I want to be closer to you, and I want our relationship as husband and wife to be closer. Mm -hmm. Amen. And the Lord will bless that. Amen.